We invite you to our services at 12 noon or live at 1205 at slugaroo.com. We also have Breaking Bread Bible Study every other Tuesday at 6.30 p.m. Giving me another chance. Glory to God. He's still right. Let's give God a hand. Praise. Amen. He still reigns. Glory to God. Glory to God. Mm -mm -mm. He still reigns. No matter what you're going through. My God. No matter what it feels like. No matter what it looks like. He still reigns. Let's give God one more hand. Praise. Before we go in. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, we're about to go in. We 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 about to go in. I know a lot of people snuggled in right now at home because it looks kind of crazy outside. But we about to go in to the holies of holies. Amen. We about to go in where it's warm inside. Amen. It's warm inside. And we thank God that we're going to go in today because there is a word. Amen. There is a word. We want to thank God for those tuning in live on the Slug TV Network. Amen. Those who are on live on Lady Ruth's uh, live. Amen. God bless you. Glory to God. I thank God that you are tuning in today. Amen. Because there is a word for today on this Christmas Eve. Glory to God. I've always been telling people, somebody must have prayed for this uh, snow out there for this Christmas. Amen. Somebody praying for this snow, amen. I like snow, but the weather conditions are just too bad when it snows around our area. Especially if you live in Auckland, you own a hill, amen. But we thank God for safe travel. We thank God for you joining us today, amen, because there is a word on today. Glory to God. So I want to say Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Glory to God. Merry Christmas, amen, on this Christmas Eve. We all know that Jesus is the reason for the season. My God, Jesus is the reason for the season. And if it had not been for Jesus being born, we could not be born again. Amen. Amen. If Jesus wasn't born, we couldn't be born again. Amen. So we thank God that some people, glory to God, giving praise on today. Amen. Some people giving praise when they open up their presents, glory to God. But we wanted people to know that Jesus is the reason for the season. Glory to God. Because when he was born, it gave us the opportunity to be born again. Amen. And I always say this while I'm preaching in the beginning. I'm already preaching if you didn't know. Glory to God. Because that's what the Lord wants us to do. He wants us to know what is the reason for your season that you're living in your life. My God. So many get Christmas twisted. Glory to God. What, Pastor? Yes. Many get Christmas twisted because they think it's all about buying gifts and going broke. Amen, lights. Amen. Amen. They think it's about buying gifts and going broke. But they forget about, glory to God, that he was bought with 30 uh, shekels of silver. He was bruised for our iniquities. But I come to refocus you all that we got to acknowledge this season. My God, if you can tell, I can barely even speak because I'm about to blow up up in here. Because people get it twisted. They buy gifts. They go broke. But they don't know he was bought and he was broken. Glory to God. He was bought and he was bruised for our iniquities. My God, he was bought and he was bruised for our iniquities so we can live again. Woo. So we can live again. So he's giving us another chance. He's giving us another opportunity to give him his praise. So Jesus is the reason for the season. My God, so, so like I said, we get it twisted sometimes. My God, we want to go all over the world. Glory to God. Looking for a gift when God gave a gift to the whole world. We look all over the world for a gift, but God gave us a gift. God gave us a gift in his son, Jesus. Glory to God. So some people get mad when they get a gift that they don't want. <laughs> you know, sometimes you get a box of rocks, amen. You get some socks, amen. You get uh, some drawers, some boxes, whatever you get. You don't want those gifts. You're like, I don't want that. I wanted a PlayStation 10. I wanted an iPhone 10. I wanted an Xbox 10. And you gave me a box of rocks? Oh, my God. Some of us don't like those gifts. And then you're like, oh, I don't want that gift. Who gave me this gift? You want to know who put their name on the gift. Because you already know what to expect when they give you a gift. Some of us don't want that gift. Because it's not what we are expecting. Ooh, this is good. Whether or not you like the gift or not, you received it and it's yours because someone gave that gift to you. No matter if you like the gift, no matter if you receive the gift, somebody gave it to you, so it's a gift. Just be like, thank you. <laughs> you know, thank you. <laughs> Another sweater, you throw it in the back. <laughs> Some more socks, you throw it in the back. <laughs> but you're receiving something. Yes. Some people, they just get mad and people get rejecting the gift, but they just don't want nothing. Uh -huh. They 
reject any and everything. Ooh, this is good. Let this bless you. Some people, when they get a gift, they reject it any and everything. I don't want it. So just think how people do in this Christmas season. I don't want Jesus. I don't want that gift. I don't want that. I want something else. People reject the gift when it's given to you. Glory. Somebody give me something. I'm going to be thankful over it. Thank you. Oh, some more socks. Praise God. Some box of rocks, I'm going to throw it on the lake. Now I'm going to do something. Listen, you got to make sure whatever you get, you use it to your greatest ability. If I get some more socks, I'm going to put them on. If I get some rocks, I'm going to throw them on them. I got to use what I got. Woo! My God. So whatever it is, I don't reject the gift that I'm given. And sometimes that's how God feels when he gives a gift. And we know what his gift is in John 3, 16. It says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Amen. So sometimes we try to give the gift of Jesus, and people don't want that gift. Oh my God, I'm walking heavy. Sometimes we give them a, a, a nice present, and they don't want that gift. They're like, no. Glory to God. But this is what it says in Romans 6. And 23, it says this, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. We want to talk about the because of that, the gift of God. My God, the gift of God is Jesus Christ. The gift of God is a new life. The gift of God is a second chance. My God, the gift of God is a second chance. And we got a second chance because we are born again because Jesus Christ was born. Jesus Christ was born. And if you read this in the message, it says this. But know that you found you don't have to listen to sin and tell you what to do. My God, sometimes sin tells us what to do. And it says, and have discovered the delight to, of listening to God telling you what a surprise. You get a whole new healed, put together life right now. My God, everybody say right now. Right now. When you get this gift, you receive this gift and your life changes right now. My God, when you get this gift, you put the gift on so you change right now. If you ain't got no socks and you got a gift of socks, you put them on right now. Because when God gives you something, it's a right now word, my God. When God gives you something, you've been needing it in the first place. But you discount it because you wanted some glittery socks. But I come to let you know, everything that glitters ain't gold. My God, my God, use what you got, my God. So he says this, you get a whole hill put together life right now with more and more of the life on the way. Oh, my God. And people look at you one way and say, my life is on the way. My God, it may look bleak right now, but my life is on the way. I don't care what I went through, my life is on the way. Amen. So that's what people got to understand. My life is on the way. My God, I'm not rich yet, but it's on the way. My God, I'm not healed yet, but it's on the way. I don't got everything I need right now, but it's on the way. My God, it says work hard for sin your whole life and your pension is death. But God's gift, my God, that's what we're talking about today. God's gift is real life. Eternal life delivered by Jesus, our master. My God, and that is what the real reason of the season is. Glory to God. That's what it's about. Glory to God. We want to give gifts because we know that the three wise men, they brought in gifts, they brought in frankincense and myrrh and brought in gold because they heard in the prophecies that a child was going to be born, the Messiah. He was going to come through 42 generations from the line of David, the bloodline of David to redeem us from sin. So he had to be born so we could be born again. My God. That's what had to happen. And Jesus is the reason for the season. So what is a reason, Pastor? It says a statement of fact that explains why something is the way it is. My God, the reason you act that way is because the way it is. My God, the reason you do what you do is because the way it is. That's the reason for the season. It's the way that it is. It's why someone does, thinks, or says something and why someone behaves a certain way. My God. A fact, a condition, or situation that makes it proper or appropriate to do something, feel something, the power of the mind to think and to understand in a logical way. My God, so sometimes we are reared up in our life because of our circumstances. Sometimes we are reared up into our life because of our geographic makeup where we live or our demographic. Glory to God. The reasons I got braids and gold teeth was the reason I'm here now. My God, because I had to go through something in my life. And when I went through something in my life, it did not 
not just go through it, but I was in it. And when I was in it, I had to come to the knowledge that my mind had to be renewed. But it didn't say nothing about my outer appearance. Check this out. Because God gives you a gift. He wants you to put it on. Woo. Woo. Reasonable gift without a reasonable doubt. That's what we got to get to. We can't have a reasonable doubt of why we do what we do. And what is a reasonable doubt, Pastor? A reasonable doubt is a term used in jurisdiction of the Anglo-Saxon countries. Evidence that is beyond a reasonable doubt is the standard of evidence required to validate a criminal conviction in most adversarial legal systems. So that is saying, you guilty without a reasonable doubt, meaning I have all the facts against you, meaning I have this and have this, but God says, I want you to believe on me without a reasonable doubt. My God, you can't have no doubt in your mind when God is going to change your life. You may be looking like this, but it says it's on the way. It's on the way. It's on the way. It's on the way. My God. So we have to have this faith without reasonable doubt. And also it says this in John 10 and 25. Jesus replied, I have already told you and you don't believe me. The proof is the work I do in my father's name. My God, so the Lord was dealing with me about proof. Everybody want to know proof. Everybody want to know if Jesus is black or white. Everybody want to know proof. Was he born on the December 25th? Everybody want to know proof. But the proof is the word of God has been written before any of us was born. The proof is he came through all those generations. The proof is he got edifices. He got churches all over the world proclaiming his name. And he don't, nobody wants you to say the name of Jesus. That should be proof right there that his power, my God, in his name. Because don't nobody want you to say his name. It says, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. It says, my name, when this rolls up, everybody should bow down to that name. So they want to discredit that name. But there is proof without reasonable doubt that he's real. My God, there's proof without reasonable doubt that he's real. My God, people want to see the proof. But let me see your life to see if God has changed your life. Let me see if God's still waking you up every morning. That's proof that he's real. My God, because some of us shouldn't have been woke up today, but he woke us up. My God, he woke us up. But he says this, Jesus replied, I have already told you and you don't believe me. The proof is the work that I do in my father's name. I'm going to pause right there because sometimes I'll be looking at my life and I want people to understand the proof that Jesus Christ is real. And the proof that Jesus is the reason for the season, the reasonable gift. Without reasonable doubt. My God, he wants you to know the proof. You see the things that I'm doing in my father's name. When you do things in the father's name, there should be evidence. When you do things in the father's name, there should be fruit of what you're speaking. There should be fruit of what you're saying, my God. So people can say, without a reasonable doubt, I know that God did that. So I'm about to bring it home right now so we can know the proof. Everybody say the proof. Glory to God. And it's Luke 1 and 26, it says, In the sixth month, an angel Gabriel went well, and was sent from the Lord into a city called Galilee, named Nazareth, to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came unto her and said, Hail, thou art highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and cast her mind whatever salutation it should be. So when an angel would come up against you or come up to you, you'd be like, what's really going on? Because back then, that was the messengers of God. That was the messenger of God. An angel would come unto you and say what God is saying to you about your life, and you're supposed to listen. So she trying to think, what type of salutation is this? What type of salutation this should be? 1 and 30 in Luke, it says this, And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary. For thou hast found favor with God, and behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. And he shall be great, and he shall be called the Son of the Highest, and the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of, the father, of his father David, and he shall rule over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom there shall be no end. And then Mary said unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? 
And the angel answered and said to her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow of thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of you shall be called the Son of God. So right then and there, she had without reasonable doubt that the gift was about to come through her. My God! She had without a reasonable doubt that the gift was about to come through her. And she was not married yet. She was still a virgin. So you should just think, how am I going to get pregnant without getting it in? Yes. How am I going to get pregnant without getting in there? What's going to go on? I don't even know my husband yet. Woo! I don't even know my husband yet. And if we can just bring it down to our generation, what you mean you pregnant and we ain't got together yet? How you showing your baby bump on Facebook and that ain't what happened with me and you? My God! So we got to bring it down to this technology. How you going to get an inbox from the angel saying you about to be pregnant? Oh my God. But you got to believe without a reason or a doubt whatever God says about your life. Amen. Whatever God says about your life, he going to do some things for your life. Yeah. My God, so you got to have a yeah. reasonable doubt. She said, what? I'm going to be pregnant and I don't even get to name my baby? Ooh. This is good. This is good. Because some of us want to name our own child. My God, what you mean? I'm going to be pregnant and I got to name him Jesus? Oh, my God. Why couldn't he be Joseph Jr.? Come on. Think about this. But listen, she was so obedient, she says, okay. My God, she was so obedient, she says, okay. So just imagine how she should have had to go tell Joseph. Hey, babe. <laughs> the angel came and told me that we're going to have a son, but this son ain't going to really be your son. It's going to be God's son, and we're going to have to bear this son. Are you okay with that? Oh, my God. You can just imagine what he thinks, but he don't want to go against God. Woo, listen, you got to receive what God says on your life so it can come to fruition, so it can birth out. Glory to God. So don't go against God without a reasonable Amen. doubt. Because it's proof in the pudding. It's proof. So now what happened was, now she's pregnant, and now everybody heard that the prophecy is coming to pass. Everybody heard what was going on in their life. Everybody heard what was going on. It says this. That in 44, for lo, soon the voice of salutation sounded in my ears, and a baby leaped in my womb for joy. My God, because Elizabeth was pregnant at the same time with John the Baptist. My God, John the Baptist was pregnant, but with a God, and, and if he was in his mother's womb, and then also Jesus was in the mother's womb of Mary. So at the same time, she let him know about what she was carrying. The baby leaped in the other woman. My God, what is in you that can make others' baby leap? My God, what is in you that can make others' babies leap when you got the gift of God that's inside of you? My God, God says, I got a gift without reasonable doubt. It's the reasonable gift without reasonable doubt. It's the gift that I'm giving you that's going to make the baby leap inside. My God, when you get the baby leap inside, moment, that's when you know God is with you. That's his seal of approval that's on you. Then you can just continue to walk by faith and not by sight. And in 45, and it says, and blessed is she that believed. Ooh. So the key is, is believing. My God, the key is, is believing on what God has to say. So the key is believing. So we have to believe what God says about our life. So when it comes to pass, that's proof. Woo, God, life. When, when it comes to pass, that's proof. And it is blessed that she believe. For there shall be a performance of those things which were told from the Lord. My God. And the Mary said, my soul doth magnify the Lord. And my spirit hath rejoiced in God, my Savior. For he hath regarded the low estate of his handmaid. For behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. My God, all generations shall be calling me blessed. So as she was birthing that gift, my God, by the Holy Spirit and not by Joseph, they walked by faith. And at the same time as they walked by faith, they had to make sure they had to go get ready because now she was about to pop. But there was no room for her. My God, there was no room for her. So how can a woman, ooh, glory to God, how can a woman who's been chosen by God from Nazareth, they said Nazareth was just like a hood. They said Nazareth was a small town. They said Nazareth was a small ghetto town. How somebody going to take this young girl? They said she was 14 between 16 years old, pregnant, but she's favored of the Lord, but don't have no room to have her baby. Her and her husband to be, glory to God, is walking around so she can have a baby, the bundle of joy by Jesus Christ coming from her womb. But she got favor. And she's walking and she's, her feet swollen. Her ankles swollen. She about to pop. She having contractions. 
Oh my God, I got to get this baby out of me. I got to get Jesus out of me. He kicking. Oh my God. Joseph find us somewhere to go. They went to every place. It's their room. It's their room. There's no vacancy. It's their room. It's their room. There's no vacancy. My wife is out here. She's about to have a baby. But there was no room. Is there any room in your heart for Jesus? Can Jesus come into you? Can, can the bundle of joy come into your heart? There's no room. But that's the reasonable gift without a reasonable doubt. That that's the proof that the word came and became flesh. He says, you're going to birth my son. So she looking, she's trying to find a place. And they say she found a manger. <laughs> she found a manger. She found a manger. She was, she was in that manger, glory to God, and she released the seed. It says this in uh, St. Luke 2 and 15. And it came to pass as the angels were away from them into heaven. The shepherds said one to another, let us now go unto Bethlehem. And see this thing which is to come to pass. My God. Which the Lord had made known to us. And they, ca made, they came with haste. And found Mary and Joseph. And the baby lying in the manger. And when they had seen it. They made known abroad saying. Which was told according to this child. All they that heard and wondered at those things. Which were told by them. The shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. My God. And the shepherds returned and glorified and praised God for all the things that they had heard and seen. And it was unto them that was told. So they seen it, they heard it, so they see the proof. The proof is in the swaddling clothes. My God, the proof is wrapped up right now. Glory to God. People didn't even want Jesus to come in. I would have made room for him. The one who's going to be the redeemer of us all. But did nobody have no room for Jesus? They forgot the season of what we in. They didn't have room for Jesus. They didn't want to receive that gift. They said, no, 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 I don't want a box of rocks. No, 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 I don't want nobody from Nazareth. No, 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 I don't want no teenage mother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, Lord. But God will use the foolish things to confound the wise to show people that there's proof in my word. There's proof in my word. If I said it, it will happen. So they said, my God, we heard it, we seen it, and it was told. My God, we heard it, we seen it, and it was told. My God, so that is what we celebrate. We celebrate this gift. The reasonable gift. Without a reasonable doubt. Baby Jesus. He was born so we can be born again. He was a reasonable gift without a reasonable doubt. So this is the proof. Now people, we can think about this because people think about your life and say Jesus ain't real. But when you walk up and you come up every morning, that's proof. Glory to God, he could have took you out, but you know what? That's proof. Glory to God, you woke up today, that's proof. The door is open, it's proof. My God, the wind is still blowing, that's proof. My God, the snow is falling down. My God, that's proof. That's the proof, without reasonable doubt. So when people try to doubt my God, my God. I say 2018, I'm about to be so excited, my God. I got a week left, my God, check this out. I got a week left to step in. I got a week left to do what I'm supposed to do in 2018, and you do too. So we have seven more days of the year of possession. So if it's some things that you're praying for, some stuff, you got seven more days to get the year of possession. Because we're going to move into the year of transition, and God has a gift for you. He got a gift for you today, but will you receive it? Will you receive that gift of Jesus Christ? My God? Will you receive that little baby? Or are you going to be like, we don't have no room here? We don't have no room here. Glory to God. So a reasonable gift is something that you receive without reasonable doubt. And the proof is that God is doing something in your life. It says, don't look at my life now. It's more to come. <laughs> don't look at my life now. It's more. Don't look at what I'm going through right now. It's more to come. I'm not who I need to be yet. My God. I'm just walking it out. I'm just walking it out. I'm just walking. I just got to do what the Lord is telling me to do. Because there's proof of what he says. My God, there's proof of what he says. So he told her, hey, I'm going to send the angel Gabriel down there to you. He's going to tell you what to do. He's going to have you to be praying by the Spirit of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is going to tell you to call him Jesus and tell Joseph. And don't be weary. 
Because the prophecy had to come forth. I'm very weary of the prophecies that come forth and they don't come to pass, my God. I'm very weary of the prophecies that come forth and they don't come to pass, my God. What's up, y'all? I'm very weary because it says it's the reasonable gift yes. without reasonable doubt. When you have that reasonable deal, gift in your life, you hold me. It's dear to you. You don't care what it looked like. You say, Lord God, thank you, Jesus. I needed this. I don't care what it, I could have had. You gave me something that's more precious than gold. You gave me something that's more precious than silver. You gave me something. You said, what is going on in your life? I got a gift for you. So when he gives you, he gives you that gift right on time. Right on time. It says, for a time such as this. My God, I need it for a time such as this moment in my life so God can come and show me the words that he prophesied is the proof. So when the proof come to pass, it came to pass. Boom. So now they got Jesus. He's in a manger. He's laying there. Oh, little cute Jesus. But well, nobody want to get him in their end. They said there was no room in the end. And also, they was looking for any child between the year one to two because the prophecy came to pass. So the king wanted to kill the prophecy. Listen, whenever the word comes out, the devil want to kill what's about to come into your life. So it's going to be all hell on this side, hell on that side. And you're trying to figure out, is this thing going to be really birthed in my life? Is this thing really going to come to pass? Because now it seems like door shutting over here, door shutting over here. Everything is closing in on me. Can somebody let me in? My God, can somebody let me in so I can birth this thing out in my life? Will somebody let me in? He said there was no room in the end. My God, but the reasonable gift, without a reasonable doubt, I don't care what it looked like, I'm going to believe that God gives me another chance to be born again. My God. So he said, this is the reason for the season. Amen. The reason for the season is Jesus Christ. He died for us. Amen. So we fast forward that. Jesus had to go through so many things. My God. People, they don't know what he had to go through and endure. They bought him for 30 shekels of silver. They beat him, my God. Every time he was beat, it was for our iniquities. Every time he was beat, it was for our transgressions. Every time he was going through something, it was for us. So he had to be born for the proof to redeem us. My God, did you know that some of the stuff we suffer, we ain't got to go through because he did already? My God, the stuff that we're suffering with, he went through it already. All he's saying is just receive me. My God, just receive this gift. He says, the gift of God is eternal life. My God, the gift of God. And some of us don't want this gift because it's coming from someone who packaged it a different way. Sometimes we look at the gift and say, I don't really want that gift. It's not pretty enough. It's not shiny enough. But it's something that I need. The Lord says, I want to come into your life. I want to come into your heart. Because I can put this little bundle of joy in little bitty old Mary. Mary was confused, but she said, okay, what should I do? He says, name him Jesus. Joseph, he just had to ride with it. My God, sometimes, you know, you got to ride with God and what he says to the other individual you ride with and you don't know and have no clue. But you got to see the proof. What you mean you're going to be pregnant by just a word of God? Stomach start getting big. He like, hold up. Who you been with, Mary? We haven't even got it in. Who you been with? So you can just think young people going through something. Now we're going to touch on something now, right? Oh, you looking different. Come on. What, you, what you got going on, Mary? Gaining a little weight. He think it's him. <laughs> Didn't think. Not Mary. But she had something inside of her. He said she got favor. My God. She got favor upon her life. When, when God gives you a gift, you get favor. And I love to say this, favor ain't fair. My God, so, so when you get favor, it ain't fair because now you're moving in something that can't nobody move like you move. My God, now you're getting into places you can't get into. But sometimes God will shut the door so he can show up and show out. My God, so he says, I know y'all don't got no room, but we're going to birth him in the manger. The king of the world became poor so we can become rich. He says, in a small town of Nazareth, they say Nazareth was so small, probably about four million people. Hey Amen. Wasn't nobody really working. It was just going through. Joseph was a carpenter. I, it was just so much going on. It was the hood. The Savior came through the hood. <laughs> my God, the Savior came through the hood. And then he went to Bethlehem. My God, so he went to every hood. And then he went to Egypt. My God. 
he was just bouncing around and I know we can relate because in our life we bounce around so much and we're trying to figure out is anything good with me he says yes it's something good with you I got favor on your life no matter your background no matter what your makeup is I have favor upon you so when you got favor upon you my God you got to know that favor ain't fair no, no, it ain't. Glory to God. And I be trying to think about some of the stuff that happens in the Bible. Some of this stuff doesn't make sense, but it's proof. It's proof. He says this, and he says that, and the prophets came here and came that, and the king killed every child between one and two years old. So just think if you had a child in one and two years old, you hate Mary. Listen. You hate Mary. Everybody talking about the Messiah. I just had a baby, and now the king killed my baby. So you can just think about the tension that's going on. All these children was killed because they heard about the Messiah coming. They heard about the gift that was coming. And everybody who's celebrating my baby just born on Christmas Day, they took it. Don't nobody want this gift now because the king taking all our gifts. I just birthed. You know, a lot of people say it's... Uh, December babies. Yeah. Think of all the December babies that the king had to come and oh, take yeah. because they thought that was the savior of the world. Uh -huh. So now and all the other teenage brothers, they mad at Mary. Yeah. All, everybody mad. Yeah, they they want to get married. So you know what? They got to leave town. Yeah. 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 And what happened? Why they keep having to move around? Because uh -huh. it was a decree on that prophecy that came to pass. Uh -huh. Back in the day, the devil... You know, he's he trying to stop things happening. But one thing for sure, he can't stop the proof. My God, one thing he can't stop is the word of God that comes out of God's mouth. If God says, let there be, it's going to be. No matter who try to stop it. But people around you going to be mad because listen to this. When Jonah was supposed to go to Nineveh, the, the, the boat went through so much stuff. And they had shipwrecked. And they said, who was on this boat making this? ship go like this. Yeah. Who is serving that God who's making this? Yeah. Sometimes you're going to make people uncomfortable because of the God you serve. Because yeah. it's going to make their life turn up. Ooh, Jesus, listen. It's going to make their life turn up. If you be around people long enough, just because you're around them, stuff is going to be shaking in their life. Yeah. And they're going to look around like, what's really going on? Who is around my life making my life shake up? But God wants you to get on your assignment like a God. So then Jonah said, it's me. And they kicked him off the boat. And the storm stopped. What are you saying, Pastor? Without a reasonable doubt, God has a word for your life. Without a reasonable doubt, he had sent a baby through 42 generations through a virgin teenage mother who wasn't even married yet. And then the baby didn't have a place to go. He was born in a manger. And as he was born in a manger, it had an assignment. His name was Jesus. Emmanuel, the Messiah. And at the same time, everybody's kid was taken. My God. My God. We got to think about this stuff. Really, what's really going on. The Savior had to go through a channel. My God, but everybody want to flip through that Jesus channel. Because it's not appealing. Everybody don't want this gift of Jesus. Because listen, you're going to have to go through heartache and pain to realize the proof that Jesus brought you out. Yes. Everybody wants a good life. But they don't want to go through the channel that it takes to get there. My God. Everybody wants the, the house on the hill. But sometimes you got to go through the valley, my God, before you can go into the top. Sometimes you got to go through something to get through something. And sometimes he might choose little bitty old you. Little bitty old you from the projects. Little bitty old you from a messed up home. Little bitty old you from foster care. Little bitty old you who's been going through in your mind your whole life. But God says, I got something for you that's about to birth out in you. But you got to see the proof. I brought you a mighty long way because I birthed my son, Jesus. He came. He came to conquer. He came to change your life without a reasonable doubt. So it's, it's without a reasonable doubt. It's proof that God has a word for you. It's proof that the reasonable season is Jesus. My God. It's just, so no matter what they try to say, no matter if they say there's no room in my heart for you, Jesus, I don't care what's going on. Listen. People don't want Jesus in their life until something's going on. Uh, yeah. Then they say, Lord, come by my end. Uh, yeah. Ain't no room here, but when you want Jesus to come through, you say, come on, Lord. Uh, 777, room 777, Lord. Uh, yeah. I need you right now, Lord. Yeah. He gonna, and you know what? He's still going to come. Yeah. Now that's so good. Yeah. He's still going to come. Yeah. Even if we reject him, uh -huh. he's still coming. Because he said, God, 
so loved the whole world that he gave us only begotten son. And he gave us the gift of eternal life. That's why I don't trip off nothing because my gift is my key to get in. My God, my gift. And I got favor, so Lord, you give me favor. You give me a gift. You give me a good life. And all I got to do is keep you in my heart. I'm good with that. I'm good without a reason or doubt. No, no matter what you tell me to do, Lord, I'm good with that. Because I know if you with me, my God, if you in here, my God, you better than the world out there. No matter how they try to break me, my God, have you noticed that life tries to break you? It tries to break you, and then when it finally breaks you, woo, now you are broken. And the good thing about it, God can use broken vessels. So when we're broken vessels, he makes us back on the potter's wheel, and he makes us to what we really need to be. Because sometimes we grow out a different way when God don't want us to grow that way. He break that arm and make you a new arm so you can do what he needs to do. And that's the proof. He makes us over again. And when he makes us over again, he gives us a reasonable service, which is our life. So all this is going to do to the year of transition. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Become a living sacrifice, which is the reasonable service. So we got a reasonable gift without a reasonable, reasonable doubt. We believe that God is going to do something in our life because baby Jesus was born. Now, like I said, if baby Jesus wasn't born, we couldn't be born again. There's always a process. There's always a prophecy before the proof, before your manifestation. Don't get so wrapped up in a prophecy that you get lost in the proof. So when manifestation comes, you don't know what to do with it. The Lord gives you a prophecy. You wait on the proof. Then manifestation comes. Meet me at manifestation. Hallelujah. Meet me at manifestation because I know the proof. I get a word. I hold that word. Put it in my heart. And I wait for manifestation. That's why I'm waiting for 2018. Because manifestation is going to come in seven days. My God, manifestation is going to come in seven days. These are going to be coming in my life. And it has to be what God said. Because he says it's proof. Proof in my name. It's proof in what I got going on. I got something for you. Will you receive this gift? The gift of God. Which is eternal life. My God. Will you receive it? I'm going to receive it. Jesus had to go through so much hell, my God, to get us to where we need to be. He had to be born, and he knew his mission. He was born to die. Mm -mm -mm. He was born to die. When he came out, he said, I'm about my father's business. He was 12 years old, preaching and teaching. I'm about my father's business. His mama didn't lost him. Jesus, what are you doing? I'm about my father's business. Okay, well, come on. He was about his father's business. He had to do what he was called to do. So my encouragement to y'all, trust God. Receive that reasonable gift without reasonable doubt. If God did it for somebody in your family, he could do it for you. My God, if God said it's going to be so, it's going to be so. But don't get so wrapped up in the proof that you miss your manifestation. Don't go get so wrapped up, I got to see it now. God ain't did it yet. My whole year gone. You got seven days. <laughs> you got seven days. So maybe for the next seven days, you might need to pray, fast, and do what you got to do to touch God. Because I always say this. Every year, you shouldn't be doing the same thing you was doing the year before. It's about to be 2018, right? We can't be stuck in 2000. We got to get the manifestation. The prophecy, the proof, the manifestation. So once you finally get it, Get ready for your next assignment. Because we steadily growing. We steadily living. We steadily breathing. And God has a word for us. Without reasonable doubt, the reasonable gift. Jesus Christ. Let's get out of here. Praise!